Now, do you like grim fairy tales? Do you like interpretation? Or oh, like the original? Even that the original are kind of messed up. I mean, quite literally. If you don't read the originals, the originals are completely unhinged for a reason. Because back in the day, grim fairy tales never have censorship. Or this is sort of the age gap you have to read this book. If you're not at that age, it's not for you. And that's basically what I mean. They do not have an age gap. It's just, let's go crazy, but teach you a lesson. They're basically horror stories. Very hard horror stories if you read the original. Nowadays, most of Rim Fairy Tales are a little bit soft, but they're trying to keep that sort of tone of horror, but a little bit less. And that's the point of this new anime called uh, Grim Variations. Of course, before I get started, my name is Rachel. I like to talk about animation. Not just animation, do reviews, first impressions, cartoon theories, and sometimes, if I have some spare time, cartoon breaking news. Of course, you like how it's going, you like to help my channel, put like, comment, and subscribe. One of those things really does help my channel. If you don't, that's fine too. But if you did, thank you. I could believe grateful if you do now let's talk about the new netflix anime series called a uh, grim variation now be warned that anything i say if i try not to spoil it because it's one of those that you really don't need to see this review to actually enjoy because the anything i talk about will spoil it because they have twists and turns and some of you saying retro it's sort of obvious you have to spoil something but some shows it's kind of necessary to not watch or hear what people are actually talking about because the less you know, the better because all the twists and surprises will grab you. Just a little warning, but be, be fair, I probably won't talk about only the first episode. The rest is up to you, but you want me to recommend it or not recommend it, I highly recommend it. But there is a but because it's not everybody's own cup of tea because how this a variation of Grimm is so hard. This is very mature adult sort of scenarios. You have somebody ripping someone's eye out, you have people eating other people, and you have sexual situations will be forced by another person. Once again, this is made for the adults, but in fact, I highly recommend it. Of course, because I said at the beginning, it's sort of an anthology series. Each episode, it depends on the quality or the, or the episode you like or hate. Because it depends on the grim fairy tale story. And depends you say you love Little Red Riding Hood. They have an episode of that, but if you don't like it, there's no chance of going the whole show for you. Because that is your fairy version of grim fairy tales but once more it's one of the things it sort of happens telling a thoughty story it's one of the biggest weakness doing that specific genre because sometimes one is better than the other one and after that nothing as equal as good but i do like to report this almost every single fairy tale they told is good like the whole story how it starts is basically how the grim brothers sort of trying to tell a story to the sister and her sister uses her imagination with her interpretation of that fairy tale because the very beginning they use sort of kind of like a kind of like a how do I describe it kind of like a sheet piece of paper that at the very beginning I thought oh they're sort of uh, cheap no the, the sort of kind of grit kind of uh, animation they use at the very beginning feels like a old like a fairy tale book but after the story starts, the sort of style completely changes depends on the story they tell. Depends which you think makes sense of that specific fairy tale. Because each, each single a grim story completely changes on genre. Like one episode is a horror story, the other person is a sci-fi story. But using the grim fairy tale sort of kind of ideas. One of the big examples is the first episode. Cinderella. To be fair, I've seen Cinderella so many times, i see so many different versions of it, but this is the thing, how they interpreted of each single fairy tale was very interesting, like Cinderella, because the whole point of view is the Wicked Sisters, not Cinderella herself, that's the one who sort of sees Cinderella who she really 
is. And that's the thing that grabs your attention, because it tells the same story, but does it sort of a Japanese way. They did it back in 1800s, or at least late 1800s, how they marry into a family, and how they tell the story how uh, Cinderella's sisters and her stepmother, they could be horrible, but because they live in sort of the hood, and her mom is sort of a prostitute, and she got married by a rich person, it's time then to change. In fact, at the very beginning of the episode, her mother, the stepmother, told her stepsisters to behave and be proper. We are not the same place anymore. Be respectful. And that's the interesting part because they were willing to change, but this is the kicker. When they made uh, Cinderella, the sister remarked something interesting. Her uh, Cinderella is sort of unhinged. Something about her doesn't feel right. And the whole story, you keep watching, they are right. Because she is eliminating them and all the people around them. How she actually does things. Things like she will forgive them, give them some stuff. But the stuff she was given is not hers. It's her late mother. And the people are sort of wondering, why is she doing that? And people start to believe... Oh, it's a stepsister. They are the one who bullying Cinderella. That makes sense because we know the stepsisters and the stepmother are completely horrible and bratty and greedy. And that's sort of the mentality you go in because you know the uh, Cinderella story. But how they play around with the story, it tells you if Cinderella is doing this. She, because she's trying to gaslight everyone. To believe they're horrible people, so why? Why is she doing this to to make people think the stepmom and the stepsister as horrible, horrible people? It's because it's a game. She likes to eliminate, twist, and turn people. She wants to mentally break them. And the more you watch the episode, the more you realize it's kind of true. And the only problem is, now they stuck with her. They don't know what to do. Every time that she's trying to tell, like, the like the father, the father won't believe them. Because everybody knows Cinderella is a kind person. And that's the thing. She's not kind. She is sort of unhinged. And she used that sort of idea as sort of a play to mess without everyone. And on top of all this, the whole episode... Give this sort of horror, uh, horror vibe because you don't know what Cinderella end goal. What is she trying to do, or what trying to basically hurt this family? And that's just the fascinating part. But I love it. They do point every single bullet point of the original Cinderella. How the sepsis are all horrible. How the prince who saved them, but they just flip it around. It's that the prince doesn't say Cinderella. It was sort of a play of the Sip sister to get rid of Cinderella. They just played the part. And that's the thing just um, amazed me. Because they use every single kind of kind of cliche of the original Cinderella. And played it as sort of like a mental game around both of them. The only problem is, is the fact it was too short. In fact, each single episode... It's around 30 to 45 minutes long. And some of you think, wait, it's not that short. It's pretty long. But how the whole story just grabs you because you're just so entertained by it. You want to know what sick, twisted reason why Cinderella, Cinderella is doing this. And she tells you because it's just a fun game for her. In fact, you realize what happened to the stepmother. Not, what happened to the mother of the father, the stepmother. It's all about her. She's the one who basically killed them all. Because from her point of view, she's done playing with them. They're not fun anymore. And that's the disturbing part. Because at the very end, the Sip sisters escaped. But now you have the prince to deal with Cinderella. And Cinderella, she's bored and thinking, what's the next game? Who will be my next play toy? And that's the interesting part because it'll leave it sort of a cliffhanger if you want to see a sequel if every guy season two. But they also add some little things in the episode, like this doll that Cinderella has, and this doll 
talks. At least that's what I'm my interpretation because they don't explain what this doll talks. The only thing you know is that Reddit has it and had have conversation with it. And this doll does move. But they never fully explain why. And it's almost like you have to reinterpret it what's actually going on. In fact, the other variation of the Grim Fairy Tale does very similar things. They don't follow complete formula like the second episode follows a little Red Riding Hood, but you actually get the point of the big bad wolf. How who he is, where he come from, but they change the completely genre of this sort of futuristic sort of kind of end of the world matrix in a way. And the big bad wolf is just a human called Mr. Grey. But Mr. Grey got tired of being in this specific club who does horrible things to people because they're rich and powerful. And they give layers to that episode. Not just this, Hassan and Gretel, or the, the other different fairy tale variation after them. Because they have about six, but in total they're 12. But they, like Netflix, they always cut in half. But each different version does the same thing. Just jump a complete genre and rebuild the world. And that's the interesting part because you're kind of fascinating how this world works depends which version. Like uh, Little Red Riding Her world that everything is sort of futuristic but only a Pacific small city. Everything outside is a desert. And that's the thing that sort of grabs your attention. Why is this going on? Why the Mr. Grey or Big Bad Wolf is rich and who is a little Red Riding Hood and they just build the story after that that the Mr. Gray is just sort of tired of that tired of basically killing and eating people and she wants the real thing and they said or oh, give you a target of little Red Riding Hood and to there I stop because there's a twist what's going on even the very beginning they tell you about the twist but how they executed it sort of surprises you in a way but I love it even more that if you like the original fairy tale, they do references a lot. The some points that sort of surprise you, they even use the same sort of sentence in the original uh, fairy tale book. Like Hansel and Gretel, that's a different, completely different versions of it. And that's sort of surprising because when you show their version of it, it's sort of shocking what happens to that. I won't go that far. But you get the idea. This is this give you the mentality. Each different version, they go a different point of view, different genre, different way of telling stories. That I highly recommend it because each one is a ride. If you don't like one, the next one you probably will enjoy because the interpretation of it. It's just so refreshing because usually they stuck to the original story. They never change anything. But this one, they do. They actually go hard. Taking the soul of the original story and retelling it that a different complete genre and nailing it. Of course, I got much much to say. I just highly recommend it. I did highly enjoy this. But be warned, it's very mature content and each episode is long. So you have a day off, watch it, you can binge watch it. But I do recommend take your time. Watch every single episode in the other day because each episode does stick to you. You just wanted to simmer. You want to think about it because it's completely worth watching. Now I got nothing else to say. Just thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.